Hi guys, it's Jeff Kuros here once again with uh, the next installment of uh, my life as an artist. And uh, we covered grammar school last time. Uh, this time we're going to get into high school. And this was uh, between 1962 and 1966 for me. Uh, I went to Lick Wilmerding High School, hard to say, in San Francisco. Uh, this was a fantastic high school, uh, whereas I had kind of a restricted, cloistered kind of life in my Catholic grammar school days, uh, this was pretty much the opposite. It was an all-boys school, very small, 250 kids in the whole school, and uh, it was for smart kids. You had to take a entrance exam to, uh, to get in, very tough exam and uh, the um, like uh, 300 people took the exam and they let 75 in and by the time the fourth year came around there were only 40 kids left in the class so almost a 50 percent attrition rate in this school it was a tough school but the cool thing about it was it was very much um, uh, a hands-on kind of school uh, in the first place Philosophy-wise, like I, I had mentioned, the restrictive atmosphere of the Catholic grammar school. Um, this was a bunch of uh, free-thinking, intellectual-type people. Um, came from every walk of life, uh, rich, poor, whatever. And they were uh, these guys were all. Um, uh, it was an, the school was tuition-free, and that was it was set up by a grant to offer a good education to anybody uh, without uh, regard to their financial um, wherewithal. Anyway, and it also uh, had a lot to do with, um, or was very big on uh, teaching uh, kids to work with their hands, um, as well as academic uh, achievement. So you had to take um, uh, wood shop, electric shop, machine shop, um, these kinds of things, um, biological sketching, technical sketching, you know, architecture, whatever, and also, and, uh, and art. And um, they, uh, so all the kids had to take these. And if you liked a certain subject, you could take extra classes in that subject. This is all quite an addition to uh, four years of math, four years of science, four years of language. And uh, so it was a tough, a tough curriculum, um, but I really enjoyed it. It was fantastic, and uh, and uh, really kind of opened my mind uh, as a person, uh, and uh, and helped me out quite a bit, uh, both uh, in my academic career and also in my uh, artistic career. Uh, the biggest influence um, for me is turns out to be one of the biggest influences in my art. Uh, life uh, was my art teacher. His name was Rolf Penn, P-E-N-N, -N. and a uh, very interesting guy. And uh, he was uh, was born in Germany, and he uh, was an art student. And when Hitler was rising to power, and when Hitler uh, basically took over the country, he was uh, Hitler rounded up all the art students and uh, declared them not as high priority or as necessary as medics. They needed medics. So Mr. Penn was uh, shuffled from art school into uh, medicine. And uh, he, that wasn't his vocation and he managed to escape. Uh, as he told it, it was one of the last flights available out of Germany and he came to the United States. So uh, what a background that that guy had. Um, anyway, he was very influential to me. He's just a fantastic person and uh, and and actually became a good friend. He um, uh, he was also the swimming coach. <laughs> you always you had to do double duty at that at that particular school. Anyway, he uh, a couple of things he taught me were um, have stuck with me till this day. Um, the, the most important of which is that uh, 
that when I was working on a composition, it should, I mean, a piece of artwork, it should always be a complete composition from the beginning to the end. He used to say I should be able to come up behind you, sneak up behind you, and pull the pencil from your hand, and at any time, and the artwork should be complete, done already. In other words, in terms of composition. Um, so he didn't like it. My tendency was to kind of start start in one corner and kind of work my way out from the paper. He didn't like that. He wanted me to do the whole thing, have the, the concept for the whole thing at one time. And that is something that I've, I think about uh, all the time. I mean, I, I use it all the time. It's, it's very, very important. He taught me a lot of other things. I was very interested in commercial art and he he had done a stint in commercial art, uh, designing uh, humorous uh, greeting cards in New York, um, and in the early days of his career. And he warned me that the world of commercial art was uh, a world of compromise and upset, and I would never be happy with it. And essentially, he wanted me to be a fine artist. Um, someone who, in our class, in my class, who did go on, he was actually a year younger than I did go on to become a uh, you know, relatively well-known artist. He's still alive and doing well. His name is uh, Peter Kitchell, and uh, he did mostly abstract things and, uh, and made a name for himself. And then uh, his wife, he married a, uh, an illustrator who has uh, graced the cover of uh, Vanity Fair, I think, uh, four to six times or something now. So anyway, I, I, um, I really wish I'd kept up with, uh, with Mr. Penn. Um, and uh, that's one little tip I'll give you right now is uh, I, uh, a few years ago, maybe four, four or five years ago, I decided I was going to look him up and uh, see what he was up to and talk to him and, you know, and catch up with him and that sort of thing. I hadn't talked to him at all since high school. And uh, he... I, so I dug around online and searched and searched and searched, and I finally found him. Unfortunately, it was an obituary. He had died about a year before. Um, so my tip here is, if you want to catch up with an old friend, uh, do it now, um, because you may uh, not have the chance. So anyway, I, I regret that, and I really wish I had, had caught up with him. He would have really enjoyed seeing what had happened, because... When I went off to college, he was um, very upset that I was going to go into uh, pre-med. Uh, I was going to become a doctor, and he wanted me to pursue art. Um, and I said, well, I don't know. My dad says there's no money in art. My dad says I better, you know, uh, you know, go into a profession, be a professional person, and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, he cautioned me, he said against it and that sort of thing. Well, anyway, I only made it two, two quarters uh, into pre-med and then I reverted to an art major and ended up graduating from Davis, UC Davis, with a degree in a uh, bachelor's degree in art. Anyway, I'll get into that next time more, um, what happened in, in, the, in the college days. But I wanted to tell you about Rolf Penn and... Uh, um, one more little thing was that uh, during my tenure in his class, uh, there was a competition for, uh, for the design of a poster for our school fair. And it was, uh, uh, I don't think there were too many people who signed up for the competition, but anyway, I, I won. And, um, um, and I remember Mr. Penn was one of my greatest supporters. He kept, he said, boy, this is really, really, uh, really nice and it was uh, the poster ended up on all the municipal railway buses in San Francisco well not all of them but a whole bunch of railway buses on the on the interior uh, ad displays anyway next time we'll get into um, a little more of my life as an artist and I hope you're enjoying this uh, if so and you think it might be uh, please make comments below let me know what you think ask me questions Give me suggestions what we should get into uh, on this forum. And uh, please, uh, if you find it useful, please share this with your friends. And uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel where I've got all of these videos and some more. Okay, well, thank you very much. See you next time.